So questions one through six are all differential leveling questions. Okay, one to six. Okay, question seven to uh, seven to twelve are all CAD questions. Okay, question thirteen to question twenty are all questions on types of surveys. That's one of the CST test areas, types of surveys. And then question twenty-one to twenty-five is basic survey calcs. Okay. So you, that'll help you guys, you know, if you're missing a bunch in a, in a section, what does that tell you? All right, okay, so in the differential level run, the first foresight is most likely taken on B, the turn point. Did you get that one? <laughs> you got that one? There's his first one, turn point. Yeah, I got a little. Good job. Okay, question two, a close, you, you hear me okay, Michaela? Yeah, I can hear you. All right. A closed differential level run has the following rod readings. Blah, 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 blah. What is the adjustment for the loop misclosure that should be applied per turn in the level run? The answer is C. <laughs> 300, you got that one too? Statistical anomaly. Okay. Is that one we need to work? Yes. Like yeah, we got to work this yeah. one, right? Okay. Don't exact anything else for me today. Okay, question three. Check all the following random error sources in a differential leveling survey. Okay, so you need to check errors in leveling the instrument, errors from a slightly out of plumb level rod. That's it, just those two. Okay, so let me explain the wrong answers real quick. The second bullet there, you do not center a level over a control point. That's something you do with the total station, not a level. Okay. Uh, you don't read horizontal angles on a level. So number four, the fourth bullet, there, there that's a, also a, would apply to a total station, not a level. Okay. The fifth bullet, misread of the back backside rod by one whole foot. That's not what we call random error in surveying. That's called a blunder or a mistake. Okay. You fix blunders, you adjust error. Okay. Same thing with number two. If you got a two degree, consistent two degree tilt in your level plane of your instrument, you got a problem. You got to fix that, right? You guys understand the level plane, if it's tilted, you're not getting good readings on your level rods, right? Okay, so the only bullets you check there are the first bullet and the third bullet. Those are random errors that we adjust. Like partial credit for the yeah, so what I would tell you there is if, if, you're, if you're within a bullet, you can you can take half credit. So if you check one bullet too many or you missed a bullet, give yourself partial credit. Okay. All right. Question four. Field crew has the wrong starting benchmark elevation for differential level loop. What problem is this most likely to cause on a construction site? The answer is A. Building foundation forms that are set too low. Okay, grid lines being shifted, that's gonna be a total station error. Misalignment of water mains would be a total station error, right? Water mains, verticals, typically not critical. And then ripples in the surface of a concrete slab, that's not going to be a leveling problem, that's going to be a construction problem. Okay, question five. An instrument operator has incorrectly read the rod for an intermediate foresight during a differential leveling run. This mistake will show in the answer is D. It won't be detected. Okay, and that's because your intermediate foresight is like a side shot. If, if you don't shoot that, if you never shoot that point again, you'll never find the error on the robbery. Okay? I'll do, you probably are confused about that. I will do a video on leveling. That'll help, okay? Um, okay. Question six. In a differential leveling loop, the backside reading for the first setup is 4.26 feet. Foresight reading for the first setup is 3.96 feet. The height of instrument for the first step is 5.25 feet. Which of the following statements is true? Now i got to read it because I don't remember. The answer is that the backside point is higher than the foresight point. Okay. All right. That yep. Yep, we'll do... Uh, I'll, I'll work that one up to see let's say me. But if you can imagine the levels, the, the level shooting a level plane, right? Yeah. So whichever rod reading is higher, 
that point's going to be lower. Okay? All right. Question seven, in CAD, a group of drawing elements that can be updated from outside the current drawing is most likely to be which of the following? D, external reference. Question eight. In it's blocked an answer as well because you could update blocks outside of the drawing as yeah. well. Oh, yeah, that's a little bit tricky. You can give yourself credit if you picked A. Yeah, that's a, that's a bad answer. I got three. Mm -hmm. I, should I got take, three. Oh, no. I should take that. I should fix that. Uh, all right, question eight. In CAD, the lie type scale for an exhibit will most likely be set in C, the layout tab. Okay, question nine. Uh, in CAD, check the drawing entity, entity properties most likely to be controlled by a layer. So here's what you want to have checked. Line type and color. Okay, uh, those other items are not controlled typically by the layer elevation with display order or horizontal location. Question 10, in CAD, a named view would most frequently be used to do which of the following? The answer is A, zoom to a preset drawing scale and pan to a preset drawing location. What did you mean by a named view? Okay, so we don't use them here because I haven't taught you guys, but you can, you can pan and zoom to a location and then in CAD you can go and say create named view and you give it a name like northwest corner or south side, whatever, and then you can go and set that name view and it'll automatically pan and zoom to that location. Okay? I just I haven't taught you guys to how to do that. But. Okay, question eleven in CAD a line entity. So we, we need to I need to do a little video on that, huh? We'll do a video, we'll do a video on that. In CAD a line entity may have which of the following? Okay, so here's what you want to check. Color, line type, direction, endpoints at different elevations. Okay, so, yep. Sorry, for width, um, can't you set that in the properties for a line? I don't believe you can do it for a line. I think you can only do oh, it for, so I'm pretty sure. Will you check and tell me if I got uh, that wrong? I think she's right, too. Yeah, you think you can set yeah. width on a line? All right, you guys tell me if you can set width on a line. You check after, okay? So don't mark it wrong if you check with till we confirm. So it's potentially all of them. No, not three or more nodes. You can't have three or more nodes in a line. Oh, that's right. Okay. Uh, question twelve in CAD: The symbol for a benchmark would most likely be organized as a block. Hey. Okay. How'd you do on your CAD questions? Got that one right. Yeah. Jay said he did good. Like all right, question 13. He was looking at Elaine's page. I wasn't. She was, I finished I did all my stuff before they were done. Okay, question 13. A differential level loop would most commonly be performed as part of which of the following surveys? The answers are the second bullet, field survey for primary control on an urban construction project. The fourth bullet, survey for a FEMA elevation certificate. Okay. Uh, we typically wouldn't do leveling for rough grade construction staking because it doesn't have to be that accurate. They're just moving dirt around. Okay, we also would not typically run levels across several counties because it's very expensive. We would use st static GPS for that. And then um, we almost never, if we're just doing a boundary survey, we almost never run levels because elevation isn't critical, right? Horizontal is critical. Okay, so it's only the second bullet and the fourth bullet. Okay, so on, on the fourth bullet, for an elevation certificate, elevations are critical, right? I'm certifying elevations, that why, that's why we run levels, okay? And then for a small urban construction project, elevations and slopes are going to be critical, right? Because we've got hardscape concrete, right? Things got to, water's got to flow the right direction, so we would typically level, at least through the control. Okay, 14, a Rhinex file would most likely be created after a survey using a, the answer is D, static GPS receiver. Did you get that one, Kazaris? I did it, yeah, Woo! Yeah, did it. All right, question 15, a minimally constrained least squares adjustment must be performed for which type of survey? The answer is D. That's per the spec, have to do it. So that's a Alta NFPS land survey. 
Question 16. Photos of an existing building would most likely be taken during what type of field surveys? The answer is the first bullet, field survey for topo on an urban site. The second bullet, FEMA elevation certificate. You have to take photos for those. It's not optional. Okay, those are the two. I, I would give you partial credit. You get half credit if you check the last bullet. Okay. But, uh, okay. Is there any question on that? Everybody understand why you take building photos on a topo and an elevation cert? Not really an elevation certificate. Okay, that's because we haven't done very much of them, but an elevation certificate, I'm usually certifying that a structure is in or out of the floodplain. You have to choose the right kind of building diagram, and it's mandatory on the form. You have to put building photos in. Okay, so that's why that one is one of the answers. All right, what type of survey would most likely require the review of a GLO Township plat? The answer is A, a rural boundary survey. Okay, so a GLO Township plat is the old government surveys they did, mile by mile. Okay, and any almost anywhere in California where you're outside of a Mexican land grant in the in the country, we're having to do that. Question 18. California State Plain coordinates northing and easting would most likely be used on what type of survey? The answer is C, geodetic control survey. Okay, and there's actually a little bit, there's a typo in there. Okay, question 19, the distances of surface utility features from parcel boundary would most likely be dimensioned on which of the following types of surveys? And the answer is A, ALTA survey. Okay. So whenever we do an ALTA survey, we gotta dimension any surface utilities that are within five feet of the property line. Question 20, measure, manhole measure downs or dips would most likely be performed on what type of surveys? Okay, so topo survey for urban site, so the third bullet, and the last bullet, survey for underground utility mapping. We don't typically have manholes on rural sites, right? There isn't storm and sewer usually. Okay, and you don't need to do that for a boundary or a highway right away survey or FEMA elevation cert, you don't need to do that. Okay, so the answer is topo for an urban site and underground utility mapping. All right, a bearing of north 80, 20, 10 west would have what azimuth? Oh man, let's see. So it's gonna be three forty nine. 349, 40, 50, 40 minutes, 50 seconds. Okay. That's the azimuth. Okay. If you missed that, you need to go watch my videos on the learning channel about how to do angles, convert between bearings and azimuths. Okay. So north 80, 20 west, oh, I lied. I'm so sorry, that's wrong. I went the, I went the wrong direction. So that, it's going to be um, two, oh man, this is making my head hurt. So I'm just short at 10 degrees and 90. So it'll be 279, 279, 40, 50, I'm sorry. Do they get partial credit for that the whole degree, right? Uh, no, <laughs> no, you got you to be able to do that. Okay. All right, so watch those videos on azimuths and angles and bearings. Okay, rectangular land parcel has the following coordinates. What's the area rounded to the nearest square foot? Okay, so the best, the easiest way to do this is you just sketch this out. I saw Elena had a sketch going. Okay, so right here we're 500, 500, right? Okay. Okay, and then our next point has the same northing. Okay but it's 250 feet east, so it's straight line, 250 feet. Okay, so that's 250. Okay, this is 500, 750. Okay, and then we come down 200 feet. Okay, so we got 300, 500 is over here. 
Okay, and then 300 750s over here. Okay, so what's the length of this side? 200, 250, 200. I'm just having you guys plot coordinates. Okay, so then you take 200 times 250. I don't know what I do with my calculator. Is it 5,000? 50,000. 50,000? All right, there you go. 50,000 square feet. Okay. Are you showing it like that makes it look so much easier than just, mm -hmm. I had no idea what was going on. Yep. Okay, so you guys got to be able to do that, right? You got to be able to sketch out some coordinates and do some basic math. All right, 23. Two property corners have the following coordinates. What is the bearing of distance between the two property corners? Okay, you don't even have to do trig for this because it's a cardinal direction, right? So it's due north. So the bearing is north zero degrees west or north zero degrees east. Either one is a correct answer, okay? And the distance is uh, 700 feet, right? Okay. All right, 24, elevation at the top of the slope is 2336.25. The slope is 3 to 1 and runs for 206 feet. What is the elevation at the toe of the slope? So again, you need a little sketch for this one, okay? So top of the slope, what's my elevation? 2336.25. Okay, and then we got a 3 to 1 slope that runs down to the toe. This is three to one, okay, and it runs for 206 feet, right? That means for every three feet we go over, we go one foot down. So you take 206 divided by three, that tells you what your drop is, okay? And then you subtract that number X from 236.25, that gives you your answer. Okay, so you want me to do that math real quick. What would, it, what would this be used for? I'm just asking. Uh, like construction staking, earthworks. So yeah. more field stuff? Yep. Yeah. Uh, you could use it in the office. You might be doing some calcs. All right, so 236. Oh, let's see. 206 divided by 3 is 68.66 feet. So I'm getting two six, I'm sorry, two two six seven point five nine as the answer. Two two six seven point five nine feet. Okay, so you gotta know how slopes work. No trick for that though, right? That's just grade school math. Okay. The following backside and force foresight horizontal circle readings were taken from the same total station setup. I give you a list. What is the average horizontal anger, angle measured by the total station? All right, so what you got to do is you got to go across this table and you got to write down the, each of the angles. Okay, so the first angle is 276, 1020, because the back sight was zeroed. Okay, the next angle is 276, 10, 18, because you got to subtract the five seconds. The back sight was five seconds past zero. Okay, the next one angle was 276, 10, 18, because your back sight was 10 seconds behind zero. Okay, and then 359, 55, you got to add five seconds, so it's 276, 10, 20, add those four angles up and average them. Do we need to work that one? Yes. Yeah. Okay, we'll work that one. 